In this video, we'll use Forcepoint Triton APX's data suite and its fingerprinting capability of SQL databases to show some uh, different ways to stop uh, customer records or anything that might be uh, fingerprinted inside your database. Uh, so first to start, um, I have a pretty empty dashboard here for Triton AP data. Um, we'll go ahead and, and look and we have no incidents here and I'll review some uh, some policies, et cetera. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you, I have a SQL database over here on, on a SQL server, and I've created a uh, custom customer records uh, database here. And if we actually look in here, we can see that I've created a, uh, a database, and we'll just look at the top. It's, it's very, very small, uh, but this is pretty fictitious information. I've got three names here, which may just be quarterbacks, some, uh, fictitious social security numbers and date of births here. So uh, this is just a very, very simple database. What I'm gonna do is fingerprint this database for this information and then use it in a, a variety of different rules. But before we do that, um, let me go close that out because we're done with SQL. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to um, show you first how to fingerprint it. So if we go to content classifiers, file fingerprinting here, um, sorry, content classifiers, database fingerprinting, uh, you can see that I already have a uh, SQL customer database table being uh, scanned uh, into a fingerprint. I'll go ahead and edit that uh, rather than set up a new one and show you, um, you know, how that looks. So basically, I, I select my crawler here. I use a ODBC source from that crawler. You know, log in. I'm just using a SQL administrator account here. Um, so this is set up, you know, from Windows ODBC connection. Um, then I specify what fields of that database. You can see I had a lot of databases in there, but I went specifically for customer records and I want to bring in all of these fields. Uh, I'm going to run that every Tuesday at 11 a.m. And uh, I'm going to do a full fingerprint each time just because that doesn't really change, but you could do differential. Uh, and that's pretty much it uh, on how to set up the fingerprint job. So what I'll do actually right now is start the job and we can see the statistics over here. And uh, we can see that it's running. And we can see it's completed and uh, just last run at 1039, which is right now. And it found three records uh, inside of there. And uh, basically we now have that content classifier. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to put that into a policy, or it's actually already into a policy, um, as, as well as uh, show you how it'll differ from a, a regular um, kind of PII policy. Obviously, this is social security numbers. So first, what I'll do is show you my default policy here. And, uh, you know, if I sort of look in my default rule, um, I have, you know, a, a simple rule. It looks for social security numbers, credit card numbers, and DNA patterns. And it, uh, it will block if, uh, let's see, if two or more of those are found, it'll block. If five or more, it'll block with, with high. Uh, and we'll go ahead and block that across pretty much all of the channels. And really quickly, what I'll do is, is show you uh, what that looks like. Um, and that, again, that is default US social security numbers, credit card numbers, et cetera. So this could be anybody's as long as it's a valid social security number. So I'm gonna go over here to a, to a machine here, uh, make sure we have the latest endpoint updated. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and, and use that. So what I have here is a database that DOCX with some names and social security numbers in it. Notice that none of those were the quarterbacks that were in the uh, fingerprinted one. And then I've got, again, some, you know, again, fictitious names and stuff, but none of the ones that were in the SQL database. And what I'll do just, uh, just to show this really quickly is sort of use the endpoint to protect copying these to the um, uh, file share here. And you can see that when I press refresh, it doesn't, it blocked that. There's a little cookie crumb there. When I come over here, you'll see if I press refresh, I now have two incidents. I have that medium incident because it was more than two, but less than five. And then I've got the high, which was the Excel, which had six. So it's obviously more than five. You can see what the file is here. We could go grab that file. Um, and uh, that's exactly how a normal DLP rule would, would be just looking for generic social security numbers. I'm gonna go over here to my email because I have a, a different action plan which I'm gonna show with the fingerprint. But you can see here I have no, no new emails. And uh, 
And that basically sets the stage here. So what I'm going to do now is show you a different policy, uh, which is called my customer records policy. And I'm going to go in here and edit this. And I'll show you a couple, a uh, couple things that are different about this policy. First, the content classifier is the, the fingerprint, the custom fingerprint. So you'd actually just go in here and go, um, you know, fingerprinting and then select that SQL database, select which fields for me. I was ignoring, I think, the date of birth field, uh, but you check which ones you want and uh, we'll include those when we try to block it. So I'm looking for customer name, social security number, and at least one value. Now the severity in action is high here. And rather than use the default block all, I have this block customer DB um, action plan. And I'll come back to that in a second, but obviously the destination channels are all the same here. But when I go to this block customer DB, this is a custom action plan that obviously quarantines blocks and it blocks across all channels because this is obviously very, very important PII that would be leaking my uh, you know, network. But what I do do here is and I send an email notification and I have this customer DB leak email notification set up because I'm, I'm so hyper aware of if my, my records are leaving. So it's not somebody just buying a car and putting in their social security number or the beneficiary's social security number or just leaking random credit card numbers or social security numbers. For me, I want to be laser focused if somebody's leaking out my customer records. These are very, very important to me. So I created an email notification to go out. And of course, even if we send out just one of these, uh, we'll block. So looking at that email notification, I can go over my resources and, and look at the notification. And, and that's over here in the customer DB leak. And you can see we're going to go ahead and email that to me, uh, which is brian at bblabs.com, which is the Outlook uh, OWA we have over here. Um, and that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do now is do a little bit of a gear change here and uh, and go ahead and leak that out. Um, so now I'll take the customer database of quarterbacks, which actually let me open that first so you can see that it's got Joe Montana, Tony Romo, and Eli Manning just in an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and copy that over here. We'll see that it gets blocked. I'll go ahead and try and email that through... Uh, through uh, Gmail's web client, and uh, again, you, the endpoint will uh, block that. You can see attachment failed. I can try retrying, and, and it keeps it keeps stopping it uh, there. So that's basically what we're going to try and do. Uh, what I'll do, one more thing. I'll actually try to print this, um, and I'll print it to my inkjet here. And you can see that uh, it's blocked printing as well. So I'll go ahead and close that out. And when I go over here and refresh, I should see like three or four. I think I tried to send the email uh, twice. Um, so here was the land transfer and you can see the customer records rule uh, was flagged. We can see again, two time, two attempts to attach it to an email here, database QBs, database QBs, and then an attempt to print it, which was also blocked. Um, and what I'll do just to show a slightly different view of that, and of course I can see that my, my customer records here was, uh, was blocked, but uh, you can see now I have four emails, 1044. Um, this shows you know, a little bit more vocal of, a, of an announcement that something bad happened, but database QBs was, was tried to be saved here. I caught this uh, content classifier rule here, the customer records one. Uh, and then we have again here, this one was going to mail.google.com, again, obviously blocked. This is the same one since I tried to attach it twice. And then here we see that uh, the user tried to print it to the Canon inkjet. So that gives you kind of an idea of how you can set up you know, more severe rules with specific notification for that, that SQL fingerprinted data. Um, and I hope that was a, a helpful video.